My eyes, my eyes. Two, two, two. Knowing, knowing, knowing. some time to receive what God has for you today. Let me invite you now to join me in a word of prayer. Oh God, our Father, how we thank you that you've extended the bread that threads of our lives to have another opportunity to say something about you from your word. God, we thank you for the privilege of being able to share your word, even on this platform. God, we pray that a seed will be planted and that seed will grow, that seed will germinate, that seed will blossom, and it will provide a fragrance of faith and fellowship and fruitfulness. God, we thank you for the privilege that you have blessed us with just to still be on this side of eternity. God, how we thank you for any who may be sharing in this moment with us. We pray that, uh, that an impartation will take place that will stir them, challenge them, confirm them as your servant. God, we thank you for this place we call Second Baptist. In the various ways you lead us to minister, Pray now that you would just bless this moment. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, today I want to share with you what I shared with my group in the 8 o'clock time this morning from Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 and the verses are 1 through 9. It is a familiar story. I entitled my devotion this morning, The Requirements of Servanthood. The requirement of servanthood. That's what I want to share with you. Luke 19, 1 through 9. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree uh, to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he is God to be the guest of a sinner. sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions 
to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. That's from the New International Version. And so, I uh, shared with my 8 o'clock group this devotion entitled, The Requirements of Servant. When Jesus left his home in heaven, he did not come to earth to be a superstar. Nor was Jesus coming to earth to ultimately be a celebrity. He really came to this earth to minister and to minister and to model a servanthood attitude and a servanthood life. I'm afraid that we are living in a culture in the body of Christ where sometimes ministry and servants may possess a celebrity mentality. Or I am concerned that perhaps in the body of Christ we have placed more emphasis on titles than testimonies. That perhaps we have been victimized by the secular culture that superstar and celebrity mindset and, and appearance may sometimes be more important than serving it. And that titles tends to give one a sense of more prominence than purpose. But when we look at the life of Christ, Christ's life demonstrates the total opposite. He came to serve. As his disciples, we have been left here on earth to follow his example and to serve a lost and hurting world. Now that doesn't mean that as servant, servants should not be honored. No, doesn't mean that. And that servant should not be applauded. Doesn't mean that. And that servant should not be celebrated. Doesn't mean that. But it perhaps does suggest that as servants, we might be treading dangerous ground when we need that to be affirmed, or when we expect or demand applause, appreciation, etc., etc. I think the story of Zacchaeus, to me, shows us some Christ-like qualities that, that model what servanthood in the body of Christ needs to look like. Because Christ did come to be our example. The first, the first precept that I want to deposit in you is this idea of awareness. That Christ had a sense of awareness of others around him. Although he is surrounded by a crowd, Jesus stopped and took notice of one particular man that's perched up in a tree. There are crowds, there are throngs of people around Jesus. But Jesus was aware of this particular man, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was hated and rejected because he was a tax collector. And the Bible says he was rich. So in order for him to become rich as a tax collector, uh, he probably, as many tax collectors in that day, 
collected taxes for the government, and then they add on an exorbitant fee for themselves. As a result of his lifestyle and the way he was handling things, the Bible says Zacchaeus became rich. And the Jews hated him because he was a Jew working for the Romans, but yet he was carrying out the mandate of the Roman government on the people of his own people. But there was something missing in Zacchaeus' life, and apparently Christ, because he's Christ, he recognized the need. But the idea is Christ took time and stopped because Christ demonstrates that he was, had a sense of awareness about Zacchaeus' need. You know, there are people all around us that are, and I use this term, they are hanging in the trees of neediness. They are hanging in the trees of emptiness. They are hanging in the trees of abandonment. They are hanging in the trees of hopelessness. They are searching for some hope. They are searching for some connection. They are searching for some meaning, but too often we are so preoccupied with our activities that we even don't notice them. Christ was not so preoccupied with what was going on around him and those who were pressing him. He was not so preoccupied that he didn't see Zacchaeus. Too often we are always looking for those that may have the external trappings that may be beneficial to the ministry. Too often, we may be focusing on the people that we believe who may have something to give to the ministry and to the work versus focusing on what the church can give to those who are actually in need of hope, in need of the sense of presence, in need a sense of peace. You know, Christ was always aware of the least, the lost, and the left out or the left behind. It was his ministry of inclusiveness. And I think the church has to be aware of the least, the left out, and the lost. Because oftentimes we may be focusing on those who appear to have those external trappings that may benefit the body of Christ, but when on the other side the body of Christ may need to focus on the least, the lost, and the left out, and how, how the church can benefit them. Christ saw him, but perhaps he also saw what Zacchaeus needed. He needed someone who would not let what he was getting in the way of ministering to him. I like that about Christ. As God's servant, Jesus was always aware of those that perhaps was on the fringes or were placed at a distance because of this and that. I'm glad that Christ does not allow what he knows about me or you to get in the way for him not being aware of my need. I think we need to think about that. Uh, oftentimes, we may allow what we know about some people get in the way of us actually ministering to their need. We see that in John 4, how Jesus teaches us, you don't allow what you may know of people to get in the way or what you have to offer or to minister to them. John 4, Jesus just ultimately just crosses the cultural barriers, the religious barriers, the sexual barriers, the traditional barriers, the racism barriers. John 4, Jesus engages a woman of Samaria. Now remember, she is a woman, she is a Samaritan. And so Jesus crosses the sexism barriers. He, he crosses 
the cultural barriers. He crosses the racial barriers. He knew that she was Samaritan. He knew that she was a woman, and the culture was he shouldn't be speaking openly to a woman uh, of, of this nature or a woman, period. But Jesus did not allow what he knew about this woman to get in the way of what he had to offer her. He didn't care that uh, she was a Samaritan. In other words, she was a product of an interrelational, interracial relationship. She didn't, he didn't care that, that even though she worshipped God in the mountains and he worshipped God in Jerusalem, he didn't allow what he knew about her to get in the way of what he had to offer her. Also, we see this in John 9, when Jesus uh, meets this, wo this woman. No, no, I'm sorry, not John 9, it's John 8. When Jesus meets this woman who is guilty of adultery, he did not allow her guilt to get in the way of his grace. He did not allow her, her present action to get in the way of her possibilities. I think the church has to learn that and focus on that. That we cannot, we have to, we, we cannot allow what we know about people to get in the way of what we can do for them and offer them. Jesus was aware of Zacchaeus' need, and he's aware of yours. Secondly, not only does Jesus demonstrate servanthood is about awareness, but also, secondly, servanthood is about availability. Jesus was heading to Jerusalem to carry out the most important act in human history, our redemption. But yet, he stopped to have a meal with the spiritually needed man. This needy man needed to have an encounter with Jesus. What could be so important that it keeps you too busy to give others what they need from you, which sometimes is some of your time? Jesus made himself available even though he was busy. It's possible sometimes that we can become so busy doing what we call church work, but then the question may come whether or not it's the work of the church. It's so easy to be consumed by your own spiritual and personal agenda that you have no time for God's agenda. It's also possible to become so busy with your personal agenda that you don't make yourself available to be used by God. I find it absolutely interesting and sad, especially on the other side of this pandemic, I find it absolutely interesting and sad that given what so many of us in the church have come through since March 2020, that there are people who are so busy at this point with just getting back engaged in the world that they don't have time for church. I find that absolutely sad. Given what we've gone through, you would think that the body of Christ, people would make servant and service an agenda. Dr. King says what he likes about this whole Christian walk is that in the kingdom of God, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. He makes this statement on one occasion. Life's most persistent question is, what are you doing for others? Jesus modeled for us that servanthood is without a doubt about availability. And servanthood without a doubt is about awareness. Being aware of the least, the lost, and the left out. And making yourself available. Putting in some time with those who need just some, some word of hope, some encouragement. Here is the last principle that I want to sow into you today about this idea of a servant. I've, I've shared that servant is about, first of all, awareness. 
And servanthood is about availability. But thirdly, servanthood is about acceptance. Acceptance. All those that kids was a notorious sinner. Jesus didn't say, clean up your act and then I'll come to your house. No. Jesus said, I'm going to your house right now. Even though you are a notorious sinner. Everybody know. Jesus didn't say, no, I'm going to wait until you get right, clean up your house, then I'll come. Let me remind you, we're called not to fix people, but we're called to share the transforming gospel of Christ with people. I love this about Christ. He did not allow what he knew about Zacchaeus to get in his way from having some conversation with him. God is that kind of God. He doesn't allow what he knows about us to get in the way. In other words, he accepts us as we are, but he loves us so much, he will not leave us like he finds us. He changes us in order that we are transformed and we are reflective of the mere fact that when we have a real encounter with him, we're made better. I like that about Christ. Christ accepts us as we are. He doesn't tell us, get right and then I accept you. He doesn't do that to us. But what he does is he takes us just as we are. And he uses us to his glory as a result of him working on us. Let me just challenge you that God calls us to be servants. How are we doing and how are we serving people who are around us? Maybe it's time for us to slow down. Slow down and be open to being available to be better servants. To being aware of others around us. To be more accepting and not judgmental of people. Maybe it's time for us to, to learn that lesson as servants. God is causing us to be better servants and to serve him more. Sometimes we just have to slow down and become more aware of those who are around us. Pay more attention to those who are around us. And be available to help them make connections. And then to accept them as they are. But be prayerful enough to share with them the gospel that says that who you are is not who you have to be tomorrow. I think that's important. Well, I hope you've been blessed today. But these are the requirements of servanthood. And I pray that you would accept these requirements and be challenged by them as we seek to do what God has told us to do. Thank you.